Canadian football is a magic show, a century-old spectacle, grown men battling to cross a line drawn in the dirt. It is a game filled with heroes, great players and great teams, bringing championship pride to their faithful fans. The field is a battleground where skill and determination are the tools of the trade. It is a game that has grabbed the nation by the heart. An annual struggle becomes an epic battle as teams fight for the ultimate glory. The chance to hold the Grey Cup and become forever known as a champion. football in Saskatchewan began in 1910 with the formation of the Regina Rugby Club. Fourteen years later, the team became known as the Rough Riders. While Regina made seven Grey Cup appearances, victory eluded them. In 1948, they became the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, the team of the entire province. Three years later, they found their first superstar, quarterback Glenn Dobbs. The entire community just went absolutely nuts over this uh, distinguished looking uh, tall Oklahoman. And he told me that he loved the people, loved going fishing with them, and the people of Saskatchewan and Regina were, were just family the way they were in Oklahoma. In 1951, Dobbs led Saskatchewan into the Grey Cup against Ottawa. But that day, it was the Eastern Riders who left the field champions. In 56, tragedy struck Saskatchewan. A plane crash claimed the lives of four players returning from an all-star game. In 1963, the arrival of Washington State fullback George Reed marked a new beginning for the Rough Riders. There were several teams in the states that wanted me to come in as a free agent, I guess, and, and try with them. And I was weighing some offers. And then I got this call about coming to Canada to play football. The deciding factor was basically money. I was out offered a thousand dollars more in the contract, and you know, at the time I was married, uh, had a young kid, so I was looking for all the money I could get. Reed recommended a former Washington State teammate who'd been trying his luck with the San Francisco 49ers, Hugh Campbell. In geography, I had studied that there was a Saskatchewan. I'm, I don't think I had heard of Regina, and. Uh, you know, I'd, I had to look at a map again to make sure of where I was going. And when I saw the uh, stadium in Regina, it looked like a farmer had built it, you know, like they'd just added on a few pieces here and there, and half of the dressing room was dirt floor, which where us rookies got to be was down there. But, you know, we had a hook for everybody to hang their clothes on, so that was a pretty good deal. That season, a trade with Ottawa brought Saskatchewan a new quarterback. At first glance, Coach Bob Shaw felt he got less than he bargained for. I go bang on the door and this booming voice says, come in. I go in and this guy says, uh, can I help you? I said, I'm looking for uh, Coach Shaw. He says, I'm uh, Coach Shaw, who are you? I said, well, my name's Lancaster. And he goes, who? I said, Ron Lancaster. He goes, you gotta be kidding me. You gotta be bigger than that. He says, wait outside, I'll talk to you later. That was my first introduction to Saskatchewan. Having spent three seasons in Ottawa, Lancaster brought experience and leadership to the Rough Rider offense, and a take-charge style that earned him the nickname, The Little General. The first time I stepped into a huddle where Ron Lancaster was the quarterback, uh, I gave him the benefit of the doubt, but I have to admit, I was a bit curious how this would all work out. He seemed quite nervous in the huddle, but then right away, we started completing passes. In the huddle, a lot of people talked and so forth, but he was the, I guess you called him the commander-in-chief in there, and he would let you know it if you got out of line. And 
is that this is my huddle, this is where we're going to do things, now let's, let's go out and get it done. Any quarterback has to have two things. Somebody to hand the ball to when he needs yardage. And it didn't matter how tough the situation was, we knew George could get the yardage. And the other one is when you're in trouble, you have to have one pass receiver or somebody on that club that you feel confident with, that you consider your go-to person. Hugh Campbell, it got to the point where I could tell where he was going by the way he was running. And when you have people like George and Hugh, you're naturally going to go to them in key situations. The Riders boasted a balance of skill and toughness, and none were tougher than a local farm boy who'd terrorize the opposition, Ron Atchison. There's no such thing as an easy game. You know, you're fighting for your life all the time. And the, you, may, you may beat a team uh, on the scoreboard, but they may beat the hang out of you on the field. So I never looked at anybody as an easy game. I always went prepared to fight for your life sort of thing. In the 1963 playoffs, the Rough Riders suffered a 35-9 loss to Calgary in the first of a two-game total point series. Heading into game two at Taylor Field, Saskatchewan fans had given up all hope of victory. Very few people came to the game because it was very cold, but they listened to it on the radio. And by the end of the first quarter, the stands were full. People were coming, they, hey, something's going on, and they came to this game, and so that even jacked us up more. We came out for the third quarter, the place was packed. And then from then on, it was one of those games where uh, it was hanging in the balance because they had four opportunities to kick field goals from within 30 yards to ice that thing, and they could they missed them. And for some reason or other, we got momentum. They couldn't get it back. The Riders won the game by 27 and the series by a single point in a comeback victory that became known as the little miracle of Taylor Field. Well, this city went absolutely delirious. There was people spilling out into the streets. There was parties. You'd have thought they'd won the Grey Cup game. It was the kind of victory that just sent this town into a, to a frenzy of, of just absolute happiness. And it ensured Lancaster of, of a place here for the rest of his life. The 1964 season was the last for coach Bob Shaw, the new man in charge of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, the sage of Turkey Neck Bend, Kentucky, Eagle Keys. Eagle Keys came as a head coach in 1965, and he was such a down-to-earth guy that he and Ronnie hit it off right away. And uh, he let Ronnie run the offense pretty well. The best thing about Eagle Keys was when he took over the football club, he didn't try to rebuild it. You know, they had put a, together a pretty good nucleus of a football team, and he just came in and tweaked it. And that football team was pretty solid for the next seven years. With the Eagle, you always knew where you stood. He always laid the rules out very good for you, and if you followed his rules and so forth, uh, then you're okay. We just built a relationship that uh, we could get things done, and he made us all feel that individually you're not very good, but together you guys can be a pretty good football team if you play together. We were a stronger offensive team than we were a, a defensive team. I mean, sure, we always tried to improve our defensive uh, club, but I was always the offensive coordinator, so <laughs> that's what I'm thinking more of uh, offense than I am defense. Under Coach Key's offensive system, George Reed became the CFL's top running back and was named the league's outstanding player for 1965. The following year, the arrival of Ed McQuarters added strength and speed to the rider defense. That season, Saskatchewan made their first Grey Cup trip in 15 years, prompting a rare speech from Coach Keyes. He said, uh, going to the Grey Cup can be good or it can be terrible. To go to the Grey Cup and not win it, he says, you'll always feel bad the rest of your life. And uh, I know he was right because if you don't win the Grey Cup, then the season is kind of for nothing. You want it, you want that cup. That, that's what you think about from your first game, is you want to you win the Grey Cup. At Vancouver's Empire Stadium, the Western Riders got a warm welcome from the enthusiastic crowd. Ottawa jumped to an early lead, but Saskatchewan's little general stuck to the game plan. For us to beat Ottawa that day, we needed to get a running game going, control the football game, uh, throw if we had to, but let's utilize our running game and keep their offense off the field and wear their defense down. We felt going in that if we could be close at halftime, we would win the second half. And that's just about exactly what happened. 
Brian Lancaster just kind of said, hey, okay, it's time for us to start playing now. And we got down and, and we started fighting our way back. And I guess the, I guess that when I broke the, I think it was a 32 yard run for the clinching touchdown, I guess it was the greatest feeling in the world because we knew that we had won the game. I can still see George Reed on the last touchdown that we scored, breaking up the middle. He hit that hole and no one touched him and he went in from like 25, 30 yards out. The game was ours right there, it was over. A 29-14 victory over Ottawa brought the Riders the Grey Cup. At long last, Saskatchewan fans had cause to celebrate and Rider pride swept the province. It was just something that we couldn't believe. We had won the Grey Cup for Saskatchewan for the first time and it was just a, just a tremendous feeling. We thought we had really accomplished something. When we came back home, the streets were lined all the way from the airport entrance to City Hall where they took us back to on buses and the town just went nuts. That Grey Cup, it has never put that many miles on as it did that year in 1966 because it traveled to every town in Saskatchewan and the people enjoyed it whether it was after the game or in May, but they, they had the opportunity to see that Grey Cup, have the Grey Cup champions in their city and it, it made it a great place to be. Saskatchewan returned to the Grey Cup the following season. Facing a Hamilton defense that hadn't given up a touchdown in five games, defending the cup proved impossible. You yeah, automatically think you're going to win again next year. Well, lo and behold, we go to Ottawa to play the Hamilton Tiger Cats and almost get killed. Their defense dominated us, and uh, they deserved to win that football game, and they did 24 to 1. They won it very convincingly. I was hoping they'd play the last quarter in straight time because we could not move the football on them that day. They shut us down pretty good. The 60s was a violent era for Canadian football. Players were always looking for an edge. Ron Atchison's was an injured arm that never seemed to heal. It just so happened to be his right forearm. And so he decided the only way he could get through was put a cast on this thing. And as games wore on, players on the other teams began to complain more and more and more. The Ron Atchison's cast was giving them concussions, was knocking them out, that he was, wasn't even trying to play football, he was just swinging this cast around. I think for the biggest majority of his career, this cast hung on a hook in his locker room, and before the game, he would lay his arm out and he'd fit this thing on it, and he'd just strap that thing up, and it was 14 pounds of dynamite, because anyone to come near him, he was gonna use it on him, and he didn't think twice about it, that's just the way he played. I didn't mind uh, if I hurt somebody. You don't hit them, they're going to hit you. You hit to, to so you can do your job. Like, if you don't stop someone's momentum, then you can't get your job done. 1968 saw the arrival of another win-at-all-costs player, a graduate of the Regina Rams junior football program, Bill the Undertaker Baker. When Bill Baker came to Saskatchewan Rough Rider after finishing university, we felt he was the most cocky, arrogant rookie that we had ever seen. We used to marvel at him. I was brought to Saskatchewan to be at the Office of Tackle, which I just am not suited for, at least at that time. So I had a terrible time with Office of Tackle. I was just totally embarrassed. I was so embarrassed that I went and called Eagle Keys, the head coach, after the game on the phone. I said, Eagle, just so you know, I really was trying. <laughs> I said, but get me off that offense. But we'll tell you this, when it came time to put him on the defensive side of the ball, everyone knew he played defense. He's got that kind of nasty disposition. He clothesline you, then laugh, and uh, he, he enjoyed himself. He had fun in the locker room, but when you got on the field, man, he was tough. The tactics, the, the clotheslining and head slapping, and the clipping on the offensive side, the tactics in those days were, were pretty brutal in hindsight. Uh, I, I, I think if I, now, if I had to close somebody that, that way, I wouldn't do it. I'd be afraid to kill him. 1969, Saskatchewan captured the West and headed for another Grey Cup date with the Eastern Riders. The game was to be Ottawa quarterback Russ Jackson's farewell to football, and he arrived with guns blazing. It seems like every time we got to a Grey Cup game, something was going on. 1969 is going to be Russ Jackson's final game, and he put on a show. What hurt us there? A couple screen passes to a guy named Ronnie Stewart. I still remember the little 
running back Stewart. He was so great that day that he's he did more uh, winning the game than Russ Jackson did. I mean, he just ran through us like we weren't even there. Grey Cup losses haunted the Rough Riders. In 1972, a last-second field goal gave Hamilton the victory. Facing Ottawa in 76, Saskatchewan held a four-point lead with less than a minute to play. But with Tom Clements and Tony Gabriel on the field, the game was far from over. We were at a house party, as I think the whole province was, everyone who wasn't attending the game, thought we had the game in the bag. And uh, all we yelled that last play was, watch Gabriel. Everyone at the house party was yelling, watch Gabriel, they're going to throw it at Gabriel. Clements is going to throw it at Tony Gabriel. Everybody in Canada, plus everybody in our bench, knew that he's going to Tony Gabriel. And we had a defense designed where we were supposed to double team Gabriel coming off the line while we were in the wrong defense and we couldn't get the double on him. So he gets off the line free and he goes to the corner. That touchdown pass with a few seconds to go in the game and that's something that uh, I know the people of Saskatchewan will ne never forget, but uh, I know I'll never forget as well because uh, I mean, great play by a great player and uh, he beat us. 1976 was the last Grey Cup for Saskatchewan's little general. Ron Lancaster would leave the game in 1978 after 16 seasons in the green and white. By 1987, Saskatchewan had gone 11 seasons without a playoff appearance. Rising costs and falling attendance had the Rough Riders on the verge of extinction. The team's directors called The Undertaker, Bill Baker. We all understood that as the Rough Riders went, the CFL went. And by rejuvenating the Rough Riders and setting an example across the league, we would help rejuvenate the CFL. I'll never forget my meeting with Bill Baker. I walked in there and he said, he said, here's what I want to pay you. Here's what everybody else in the secondary makes. And if you don't like what I'm going to pay you, what I'm offering you, uh, you can play somewhere else. And it was that simple. I love the, the fact that he, he laid it on the line. He showed me where I was in the big picture, and I said, hey, well, hey, I can live with this. I don't like taking a pay cut, but I can live with it. With salaries in line, Baker's next move was a tug on the heartstrings telethon, and fans responded in true Saskatchewan style. You've got to see these telethons to believe them. They, they get a, a whole night of free airtime. Dewey Campbell came back from Edmonton. Uh, you know, Lancaster came in and so on. And they just get on that show and they'll get farmers sending in uh, tens of thousands of dollars to keep this team going. I remember uh, feeling the urgency of the telethon and feeling the fact that if we didn't raise enough money in this telethon that this team would no longer exist, which is something that I just couldn't, you, you couldn't fathom living in, in that province. The Saskatchewan has, has always prided itself in being the best sort of fundraising. We, we may not have the best football team, but we always have the best fundraising. And that, and that really is the culture that Saskatchewan has. Bill Baker had instant credibility, so the fans responded to him. And I would say that he will always be remembered as another one in a long list of people uh, who have saved this franchise. As the 80s drew to a close, Ryder Pride returned to Taylor Field. Saskatchewan became a contender again as a new crop of stars took the team back to postseason play. In 1989, Saskatchewan advanced to the Western Final against the heavily favored Edmonton Eskimos. People were saying that the Edmonton Eskimos in 1989 were the best team the Canadian Football League had ever seen in its history. And we had no shot in that Western Final. When we ended up winning that game and went back to Regina, the province finally had a team to cheer for uh, into the playoffs and, and a team that was going back to the Grey Cup, a place they hadn't been in a lot of years. When the veteran Riders squad took to the field in Toronto's Sky Dome, the players knew that this could be their last chance at Grey Cup glory. It was one of those situations where, you know, again, you kind of doubt yourself as far as, well, geez, everything, you know, going and we're not, we're not getting her done. We're not getting any younger. So if we're going to get an opportunity to do it, we better not mess up. I felt to myself, if I, if I blow this opportunity, I may never see this chance again. And I, and for me, it was, watch as much film as I possibly could, stay in my regular routine, and, and get ready for the biggest game of my life. The Hamilton Tiger Cats provided the opposition in one of the greatest Grey Cups ever. 
Tony Champion's spectacular catch tied the game with only 44 seconds to play, but the Riders weren't done yet. I have never seen a more confident group than the one that Ken Austin took on the field for that final drive. I, I had no doubt in my mind that we would be in field goal range. In fact, I remember walking over to Dave and said, get ready, because we're going to win this game in regulation. Coach Gregory called a timeout, and it seemed like we are trying to decide whether we should, uh, you know, possibly run another play before he made the kick. And then we decided, Ridgeway said, I want to make the kick now. Let's get it over with. And uh, Bob Pauley made a great snap. Uh, Glenn Suter put the ball down, and Ridge kicked her through, and the rest of us, you know, were just cheerleading, I guess. So it was a great feeling. As Ridgeway's last second field goal broke the tie, the entire province of Saskatchewan celebrated the Rough Riders' second Grey Cup championship. You know, to play as long as I did and finally get that opportunity to hold that Grey Cup, it was uh, a real special moment for myself and my teammates. I guess what they say is uh, the longer it takes, the sweeter it is, and it certainly was sweet for us. Everywhere we went, it was congratulations and thousands of people in Taylor Field to greet us in, in, the, in the snow blizzard and, and, uh, and see the Grey Cup in, in Taylor Field. And, and we had a chance to, to bring it back and hand it back to the province that deserved it because they'd wait a long time and, and, uh, and it, was, it was a great feeling to be able to give them, give them that Grey Cup. There was celebration after celebration throughout the province of banquets and dinners. They had to bring the Grey Cup and everybody got to drink out of it and everybody got to hold it. And uh, they won that big one that year in, in a game that people I think still will talk about. And you, you will never find a more exciting football game than that one. Today, as new faces and new heroes fight to bring Saskatchewan Grey Cup glory, one thing remains true. Nothing is stronger than rider pride. I guess they always say there's only two seasons in Saskatchewan. That's football season and winter. So uh, it's one of those things where people just learn to love the Rough Riders and football. The feeling of the people in the province is if you have a good year as a football team in Saskatchewan, it affects the whole province. When you look at the Saskatchewan Rough Riders and, and what they do in that province uh, and what they mean to the people of the province, it's, it is unique to, to anything I've ever seen in, in all of sports. It's not just a team, it's not just a game. It's a way of life for them.